up my channel welcome back to another video i'm messy jesse and you're watching today's video is one i am very excited about it is going to be an unboxing of book mail slash book haul i am so excited about these books I normally don't film my book mail, so if you like this video, at the end of it, let me know in the comment section down below if you want to see more book mail content from me on this channel. My packages were just piling up in in my entryway, and I was like, you know what? I have to do an unboxing anyway. I have to put these books away anyway, so I might as well build my journey doing so. I have some book mail that is solicited by me, some that is completely a surprise. I have one Amazon package that I believe is a box of gifted books from one of you. So I'm really excited. Honestly, I am privileged and lucky enough to be able to get almost any book that I would like to read directly from the publisher, which is an immense privilege and one that I take very seriously. But the book mail that honestly means the most to me is when y'all send me something. And I've talked about this before, but whenever I get book mail from y'all, I always right in the inner corner of the book who gave it to me so that I always can remember the person who gave it to me and it remains special and very near and dear to my heart. So anybody who's ever sent me a book, I really appreciate it. Books are the ultimate gift, especially for me. Books are literally my love language. So I feel very loved and very seen whenever I get books from y'all. Of course, you are never obligated to send me anything literally ever. Like I said, I am privileged and, and able to get books from the publisher, but gift giving is my love language. It's how I show love and also my preferred way to receive love. And I feel like gift giving as a love language gets a bad rap because it's seen as kind of selfish, but I am Mexican and gift giving is a huge part of my culture. I literally grew up physically being unable to leave another Mexican's home without some form of gift, whether it was food, whether it was a belt that the owner no longer wanted. I would get gifts from my tias of things that I couldn't possibly wear because they were so much older than my personal style and didn't even fit me. But it, and it's not about the gift itself. It's about the act of ensuring that whoever walks over the threshold into your home leaves with something that they didn't have before. And so that's how I grew up demonstrating love and receiving love. So I that has definitely become very much embedded in who I am as a person. Therefore, anytime I received a book, a book as a gift, and of course, books are my favorite thing. So it's my favorite form of gift. It become something that I truly cherish. I'm very excited about all of these books. Why don't we just get started? This novel is titled We Are Watching Eliza Bright and it features a incredibly talented video game coder who is female. She deals with a lot of workplace harassment and suffers from the patriarchy at great length, especially because gaming is a male dominated industry. When these angry men continue to make Eliza's life hell, she ends up being indoctrinated into a female collective known as the Sixterhood after the violence moves from cyberspace into the real world. It is somewhat of a thriller where you have this woman literally fearing and trying to fight for her own life as well as social commentary on sexism, especially for women in STEM fields. I am very, very excited. I'm excited for the commentary on cyberbullying, especially as it impacts women and girls. This sounds fantastic. So especially for any of y'all who are gamers, regardless of your gender, I think that this would be a book that you could potentially enjoy. The next box that I have here is from Harper Collins, which is one of my favorite publishers. And that, ooh, so it's wrapped within the box. Look at Harper Collins playing cat and mouse. I'm so excited. I haven't done an unboxing video on this channel in I feel like quite a while. So this, oh, okay. So this is titled Goodbye Again, featuring essays, reflections, and illustrations by Johnny Sun, who is the author of Ellie, Elian, okay, everyone's an Alabin when you're an Alabin too. I absolutely love those comics and I and they only recently were published into a cohesive book if I remember correctly. Oh my gosh, pothos plants, we gotta love it. I'm thrilled to hear more about the author, the mastermind behind what has become such a viral and beloved comic. Oh my gosh. The author is one of the writers for Bojack Horseman and look, if you were one of the many people who started BoJack Horseman and was like, what is the deal with this creepy alcoholic talking horse? 
just hang in there. I too, when I first started the show, was like, what is going on? This is not it. But the further that you get on into the show, you realize that it is truly a comedic masterpiece, especially for satire. The social commentary is simply on point and the show becomes so much more than Bojack himself. You have representation uh, at length for an asexual male character. You also get to have fantastic insight into the life of an Asian female writer and her struggles both with sexism and racism within Hollywood. There is so much more about that book. It gets into parental abuse and neglect, the book, the TV show. The TV show gets into parental abuse and neglect and it also gets into alcoholism and trying to better yourself but having to consistently live in this cycle where you are having relapses into the person that you once were. Why am I talking? at such great length about BoJack Horseman. See, this is what I mean. Like, I can't even see the words BoJack Horseman without going onto a whole rant about why I adore that show. So this author also has done a TED Talk on loneliness that has been viewed more than 3.5 million times, a doctoral candidate at MIT, a creative researcher at the Harvard Meta Lab. I am wildly impressed and this is an Asian author. Many of us, myself included, are focused on AAPI liberation and on AAPI reads. So this would definitely be a fantastic book to add to your TBRs, but actually read it. Okay, so the next box that I have here, this is from Simon and & Schuster. I'm not sure what's in this. Okay, so this is an unsolicited book that I have received from Simon & Schuster. The true story of the wind blown, four men who vanished at sea, and the survivors that they left behind. This book is none other than The Lost Boys of Montauk. I love books centering the water being lost at sea, the dangers of water, because it is far from secret that I am a chicken when it comes to water. I love water if, and the if is very important, my dears, listen closely, if my feet can touch the bottom. If my feet cannot touch the bottom, Jesse is not happy. Jesse is leaving. Jesse is going into the woods where Jesse belongs. I am an earth sign to my very core. I like to be rooted. If I could be a tree, I would be a tree. So I believe this is a true story set in the March of 1984 where a commercial fishing boat known as the Windblown leaves the Montauk Harbor on a routine offshore voyage. But after the weather takes a dark turn, a week into their journey, the crew finds themselves fighting for their lives and losing one another. We also get deep insight into the village that these men came from, which is described as a drinking town with a fishing problem. I've always been very fascinated about the intense politics that small towns breed, the intense cultures that small towns breed. And so I'm really excited to see how the town reacts to the disappearance of these men. Genuinely very excited about this book. Next, I have a box that was sent to me, I believe by Penguin Teen, by Penguin Random House. And I have to show you the cover of this box. It says the poem that captured a nation by Amanda Gorman. Amanda Gorman, of course, is the black female poet who has taken the world by storm after performing a beautiful spoken word poem at the coronation of President Joe Biden. Absolutely very excited to see what is in this box. I, oh, oh, huh. this is the cover. Let's just cover up my face so that you can see how bleh, beautifully, beautifully stunning that this is. That awkward moment when a book cover is more attractive than you are. Here's to leaving behind a world better than the one we were left. I hope you enjoy this printed edition of The Hill We Climb. Thank you for all that you do with love, Amanda. And if you slide this darling sheath off, Oh, look at, so proud. Did I say coronation? I meant to say inauguration. <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm a reader, I swear. With a foreword by none other than Amanda Winfrey. I cannot talk. <laughs> With a foreword by none other than Oprah Winfrey. Okay, unsubscribe from my channel. I clearly don't know what I'm doing. Between the pages of this book is contained The Hill We Climb, the inaugural poem that took the country by storm. I am so excited to get to read this in written form. Oh, just, 
I'm very, very excited about this. So huge thank you to Random House. All right. And I still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, more boxes. This is from, who this from? Who this from? This is also from Harper Collins and the. <laughs> yes. Okay. So Harper Collins sent me a paperback of Lakewood, which is one of my favorite horror novels. I absolutely adored this book. I read it first via audio and then I purchased the paper, the hardcover because I was so deeply, wildly enamored and obsessed and they now have sent me the paperback. I am so excited and for those of you who are unfamiliar this is about a young woman who comes from a struggling family she's very close to her grandmother when her grandmother dies and has to assume a lot of the family debt in order to cover this debt she decides to sign up for this highly secretive experimental program that she's not allowed to talk about this is a medical experimental program where she is expected to undergo certain treatments that cause physical changes in her body there is extensive body horror in this book and it features scathing and eviscerating commentary on the history the legacy of experimentation upon black bodies including those that are both forced and coerced which is a major problem in the United States and has been since slavery. I saw several reviews from white individuals saying that the experiments in this book are highly unrealistic and for anybody who read this book and thought that I highly encourage you to actually take a look in to the force experimentations that have been unjustly brought onto the shoulders of the black community throughout America's conception and not just during slavery but also going into Jim Crow also going into the 1940s. This is a book that talks about all that black bodies have been forced to endure and continue to endure in the name of science. So to call that unrealistic is not only ignorant but it is deeply racist and dismissive of how much black bodies have suffered in the name of science. Okay, so the next box that I have says Simon Teen Arc Box. So we got some arcs up in here. Arc, arc. <laughs> Get it? It's like arf, like bark. So. I feel like I shouldn't have this. Like, <laughs> this is one of my most highly anticipated Black Girl Magic books. And I've been anticipating this since before the official book announcement because I got to meet the writer at Booknet Fest and she was, oh, oh my God, I'm so excited to finally have LaSalle Sombery's debut novel, Blood Like Magic. Look at this. Mm, mm. Look at that cover. Hey, hey, <laughs> look at the cover. Oh my god. Oh my god, y'all. Oh my goodness. This is so exciting. I actually don't know the synopsis of this book because I've simply never cared to know. All I know is that LaSalle was so excited about her book when I met her. This is gonna sound creepy. So LaSalle, if you're watching this, I'm sorry for who I am as a person. But you know how sometimes you meet an individual that you automatically feel akin to? And being in LaSalle's presence was so comforting and she has such she has such a unique energy and just I knew that her book would be special just like she is. So I am very excited. Now let's get into what this book is actually about, shall we? After years of waiting for her calling, a trial every witch must pass in order to come into their powers. The one thing Voya Thomas didn't expect was to fail. When her ancestor gives an unprecedented second chance to complete her calling, she agrees and then is horrified when her task is to kill her first love. There is much more to the synopsis, but it is essentially about the mounting pressure from her family, being caught between morality and duty to her bloodline. And honestly, I am completely here for it. Ancestral magic is a huge, huge yes for me. I am currently compiling a list of black books that feature ancestral magic and I want to make a video about the importance of ancestral magic within the black community specifically within magic communities but I'm not even going to get started on discussing it here or else we would be here absolutely all day thank you so much to LaSalle for putting this beautiful much needed and very exciting book out into the world now I have another box from Penguin Random House that sound that came out of my body <laughs> okay 
So these are two books that I requested from Penguin. I'm so excited that they actually sent me Sisters by Daisy Johnson. Daisy Johnson is the talented author who did a, I believe it was an Odysseus retelling. I personally didn't care for that retelling. I forget what it was called. The writing was stunning. I absolutely loved many of the elements of the story, but overall the story just, there were some things that the story dropped the ball on for me. However, I still want to continue reading her because I know that she's going to write a story that is for me and I feel like Sisters is going to be the one. First off, look at this amazing psychedelic abstract cover. Absolutely stunning. I love covers that have splinters of faces on them. Where is it? I have a book to show you. I'll be right back. So another fantastic example of a cover that is similar to this that I love is Permission. Look at this. I just think it's stunning. So yes, I'm very excited about this cover. Now for the synopsis. This book is about two sisters named July and September. The story begins when their mother moves them across the country into an old house because that always works out so well. July finds that the fierce bond she's always had with her sister, which was forged with a blood promise made when they were children, is beginning to change in ways she cannot understand. Taught, transfixing, and proudly moving, Sisters explores with the fury and joy of adolescence. Essentially, this is about the dark web that these two sisters are caught in, a web of their own making, a story of two sisters and their jealousy, their rivalry, and their struggles to understand each other's darkest impulses. Again, a very ambiguous, secretive type of synopsis, but I'm still very excited for this book. And honestly, sometimes a lightly written synopsis is simply what's best. So the next book that I requested is Send For Me by Lauren Fox. Everybody was reading this on Bookstagram, I believe last year, and I somehow just missed the memo completely. I only recently heard about this book and I requested it from the publisher immediately because it sounded so fantastic. This is a work of historical fiction that moves between Germany on the eve of World War II and present day Wisconsin. It is about a girl named Annalise who works at her parents' popular bakery in Germany. Despite the rumors of anti-Semitism that is spreading, she and her family refuse to believe that Germany could be capable of such a thing. But when patronage at their bakery begins to slow and they struggle to maintain their livelihood, the book then skips to two generations later where we are following her great-granddaughter who stumbles upon a trove of her great-grandmother's letters from Germany. She's currently a woman newly in love and and it sounds like this book is about her deciding if she wants to stay in America with her love or return to her roots. I have heard nothing but amazing things about this. I really love historical fiction, especially World War II historical fiction. Okay, so I have two boxes here from Hatchet and they're big boys. They big boys. So let's see. The first book I have here is Let's Face It, Secrets of a Skin Care Obsessive, which I am. I have done some videos where I talked about my skincare routine and such and I'm just I'm a really big fan of taking care of my skin. I always want to know more. I'm really into acids and which acids you should mix, which you shouldn't. I am so freaking excited about this. I am going to be reading this book as soon as humanly possible. Honestly, this sounds freaking fantastic. Okay, I'm not sure why we needed a box of this magnitude for two books. We just gonna let that go. The next book that Hatchet has sent me is You'll Thank Me For This, which looks like a thriller. 12 year old Karen is blindfolded and dropped into the national forest with three other children with nothing but a few basic supplies and emergency food. They have to navigate the Netherlands, the Netherlands, okay. The Netherlands, the Netherlands, the Netherlands, the Netherlands. Most beautiful and wild locations to return to where their families are anxiously waiting. This sounds like a book that I would rather read sooner than later. I haven't done my April TBR yet. I'm gonna film that after this and I'm gonna see if I can sneak this onto my TBR. It's a big box. So if there's only two books in this, I'm gonna ask why. Por qué? Por qué? There's two books. Oh, there's three. Okay, I, I can't be mad. There's three. There's four. Cuatro. Okay. So this is another thriller. Ooh, okay. So this looks bike, looks bike, 
What is going on? Look, I haven't eaten. Perhaps that's it. It is about a French cop who wakes up in New York City on a bench with no memory of the night before, handcuffed to a complete stranger, disoriented days, and with someone else's blood on her shirt. Alice works furiously to connect the dots. Me when I go out for a night drinking. And this is set in the course of 24 hours, which is one of my favorite tropes. Again, this is a book that I'd rather read sooner rather than later. That sounds amazing, y'all. And then I forgot they were sending me Walter Mosley's latest book. Walter Mosley is a prolific black black. What's going on? Prolific black author in the thriller genres mysteries and i have not read any walter mosley so i am a awful thriller mystery fan and this is his latest work which has been titled blood grove and this author is wildly established look look at look at all his works is there another page so this looks like it is a historical fiction thriller it's set in 1969 has his life turned upside down when a young man comes to him with a story that can't be validated he is a white vietnam veteran and at the same time his adopted daughter's white uncle shows up uninvited and raises questions and unsettling the life that easy has forged for his adoptive daughter so again a very kind of mysterious synopsis but i'm very very excited about this regardless two more books in here oh i hate when you lay on your hip and it falls asleep that never used to happen to me when i was younger so love that for me this book is called the mercies and i really love the cover i love it it's kind of 90s which i dig this is set in Norway in 1617. All of the village's men are at sea, including Marin's father and brother, and all 40 are drowned in the otherworldly disaster. For the women left behind, this means defying the strict rules of the island. They fish, hunt, and butcher reindeer, which they never did while the men were alive. So essentially it's about these women trying to survive and defy expectations about female solo survival when the town's men die at sea. I'm thinking maybe I should do a water book vlog, like a dark water themed reading vlog. Let me know if that's something that you're interested in in the comment section down below. And maybe I can do like a fire themed reading vlog because this is also about, you see what I'm saying? I'm really into the elements. I'm not big into the horoscope. I And I know I'm gonna get so many dislikes and unsubscribes for this, but personally for me, the horoscope is not for me. People ask me about my sign and I'm like, I'm a Taurus. And then they'll ask me about what my rising moon is and my set. I don't know. <laughs> and, and I don't care because it just doesn't speak to me personally. If it's a big part of your life, I totally respect that. I think that's great. I would never look down on somebody for enjoying their own horoscope and using their horoscope to guide their life. I think that's great, but it just doesn't speak to me. However, the earth signs do speak to me and i'm actually writing a novel that has elemental magic so like i definitely do identify with what it means to be an earth sign um etc so i think it would be really cool to do some reading vlogs centered around or even book reviews centered around the idea of the elements and the next novel that hatchet has sent to me oh and i think i'm saying their name wrong i read recently that it's not hatchet it's hashet hash hashet I'm doing great. This is called Acts of Desperation. This is a literary debut novel about love addiction and what it does to us. Our unnamed narrator meets a magnetic writer and falls against her better judgment under his spell. After an all-consuming romance, he rejects her and sends her into a tailspin of jealous obsession and longing. If he ever comes back to her, she resolves to hang on to him and his love at all costs, even if it destroys her. That sounds really good. Again, I want to read that sooner rather than later. I wish I hadn't received so many books that I'm dying to read. I have two more boxes left. I have the box that one of y'all sent to me. And then I've got my feminist book club unboxing for April. So I am going to do the unboxing for this and wrap up this video with talking about the awesome books that one of you sent to me. So for those of you who don't know, Feminist Book Club is a box that I'm partnered with. They also have a podcast. They're my favorite bookish subscription box. I have I have been following them for two years and then about six months ago the author the owner reached out to me and asked if I wanted to be an official partner and I was like absolutely 
I love that she always includes a handwritten note. I save all of these because I'm super sentimental. They donate 10% of their proceeds to charity, a charity that changes every month. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. All of their boxes are themed and usually the theme focuses on something that is central to feminism and resistance. In March, there was a Caribbean themed box. There was a fat liberation box in February. They're just fantastic. I really love their mission, their vision. And then all of the items in the box are curated by trans folks, women, queer folks, with a focus on local folks and folks from marginalized places. It's just a really great way to not only support their local to Minneapolis where I live, not only support a Minneapolis box with a feminist image, but also to support small queer and BIPOC businesses. Okay, so this is going to be their April box and the theme for April is environmental justice. Y'all, I have been screaming from the rooftops about how beautiful we were, which I read in February absolutely loved and it is the book if you are concerned about environmental justice at all especially as it in impacts African lives it's not set in the United States so don't even get me started on how beautiful we were I have a review on my Instagram and I will leave that link down below so they also do an author Q&A every single month for their subscribers oh, and I don't know this author but I'm very excited let's see what's actually in the box this is a looks like a toilet paper roll from bim bam boo and it says, let the good times roll, which I think is hilarious because it's a roll of toilet paper. This is a hypoallergenic formula that will wipe away worries, irritation, and linty leave behinds. Oh, it's made in Minneapolis. That's so cool. Their product helps save trees. That's a fantastic way to support the environment. And then there is this chocolate chip walnut cookie. Yes, this looks so, it's got seven grams of plant-based protein. That sounds amazing. Where are you made? Oh, it's a vegan gluten-free cookie. Okay, so this is a beeswax food wrap. So what you do is you use your hands to mold the wax wraps around bowls, cups, cans, and snacks. You can hand wash it with cold water and soap and then let it air dry. You should keep it away from heat though. That's really freaking cool. Yeah, it helps to store your food in a nifty zero waste way. I'm obsessed with that. I am absolutely obsessed with that. A compostable kitchen scrubber from Brooklyn Made Natural. And it also comes with a toothbrush that is also biodegradable. This is the toothbrush. I really love this. I think this is fantastic. And that's from a Brooklyn company. Now for the book. This book is called As Long As Grass Grows. And this looks like it is from an indigenous author. It is about the indigenous fight for environmental justice from colonization to standing rock. Let's go now you see why i love this box so much so i will leave my discount code you can use the code bow ties for 15 percent off of your box um i'll leave that in the description box below if you want a monthly bookish subscription i never once have been disappointed by this box the curated items it's just a great family to join and you know when you join this subscription you are not supporting a company that is only out for itself it's just fantastic. And I, I honestly like really stand by the vision of this company. Hi, Akasha. Hi. I know I've been filming for a while. You wanna come say hi? Don't knock the camera over. Okay. Hi, stinky breath. Hi, you stinky breath. You, you just came to stand. Okay. We, we're gonna play after, I thought. After. So my dog just said it's time to wrap it up. Va. Va. She's so over it. I'm gonna take her to the park after this and she's back. Oh my gosh. Okay, so, ooh, what's these? What's in here? Oh my God. Oh my God. One of you sent me Hide and Seeker, which is, it has been at the top of my wish list because middle grade black horror, I mean, let's go. I, oh my gosh, I've, woo! This is about a kid named Z who went missing for a year and at his welcome home party, kids in the neighborhood decide to play a game of hide and seek. The game does not go well. I am so excited about this book. Then, ooh, what's this? Why did I become like oddly British? Then I have received Nosferatu by Joe Hill. I read this book in audio form and I've been shouting about it. I, I think for a year now, I, I cannot talk about this book. Basically it is a modern vampire story and it surrounds this vampire who has built this realm that he takes children to called Christmas land and he murders them. And it's really freaking good. It's a fantastic, gory, 
amazing book that I really like and I've never read it in the physical so I'm super excited. This one seems super interesting so I hope you do a review on it if you like it and that was about that was about hide and seeker and then the last one says I really enjoyed your blackathon vlogs oh my god thank you. Nosferatu is one of my faves so I hope you enjoy it too. I hope you're doing well and keep up with the great content from a Canadian fan. Thank you so much. I'm putting this immediately like this is what I do when I get gifts from y'all. I will literally take this if the box included one and I will tape it to the inside. Sometimes I'll like cut it down. Um, otherwise I'll just write the name of the person on there. But yes, I've read Nosferatu. I've loved it and I've craved having it in the physical. So thank you so much. Like you sent me a book that I have been dying to read in the physical and I like cannot thank you enough. So that is going to do it for this video. I have to wrap it up quickly because my dog said it's time. But if you would like to see more videos like this, just comment down below. If you want to show me that you made it this far in the video, why don't you put that monkey emoji where the monkey's covering its eyes because of hide and seeker. Otherwise, you can put hide and seek in the comment section if you want to type it out and you don't have emoji access at the moment. That's going to do it for this video. If you want more content from me, you can subscribe to my Instagram, which is Bowties and Books. Also my non-binary book club, which is NB Book Club on Instagram. But all of my social media links will be in the description box below, along with my discount code to the wonderful, fabulous feminist book club box. Stay safe, wear a mask, and I hope to see you in my next video.